Hello everyone, welcome back to another Arch Cray Reaction. I'm Shorty P. I'm Pickles. Today we're going to be reacting to Chernobyl Episode 4, The Happiness of All Mankind. Last episode Ooh. was heavy. Yeah. Big. Yeah, definitely deeper and a little bit rougher than the first couple. Yeah. Um, so I did some research on the firefighter because I figured since we're at the end of his storyline, they're couldn't be much as far as spoilers i did find out like probably some of the worst luck you could have the day of the explosion he was he was scheduled to go on leave at around 4 a.m for vacation and the explosion happened around 1 30 a.m so he and his wife would have been like completely out of the area or he wouldn't have been able to be called in yeah it's some luck yeah um but yeah, we're starting to see the effects of the radiation like really heavily, and we're seeing the cleanup effort. So I think that's what it's going to focus on now, is everything they did afterwards. Yeah, and is the wife really pregnant? Um, I believe so. People had pointed out that when it in the first episode when we first saw her, she was coming out of the bathroom from being sick. You know, now that I think about it, I do remember that. Yeah. I didn't at the time, but I do remember... Her being sick. Yeah. So, about 99% sure she's pregnant. That poor baby. Yeah. All right. Let's get into it and find out what happened. Okay. It's like one of those AFV, can you guess the sound? Yeah. <laughs> Funny. That is actually what I thought it was. That's not what I thought it was. Did you hear me? This is an evacuation. You understand? You have to come with me. Why? It's not safe here. There's radiation in the air. What's wrong with you? You know how old I am. Old. I'm 82. I lived here my whole life. Right here, that house, this place. What do I care about safe? You're not the first soldier to stand here with a gun. When I was 12, the revolution came. Tsar's men, then Bolsheviks. They told us to leave. Then there was Stalin and his famine, the Holodomor. My parents died. Two of my sisters died. They told the rest of us to leave. Then the Great War. German boys, Russian boys. More soldiers, more famine, more bodies. My brothers never came home, but I stayed and I'm still here. So I should leave now because of something I cannot see at all. No. It's time to go. She's going to pick it up and start milking again. Yep. I can't imagine how hard it'd be being told that you have to leave in the only place you've ever lived. Yeah. It's time to go. I mean, she's 82, so it's like she's already lived her whole life. If she's done and just wants to live out her final days. I mean, I get their point, you know, like evacuating and get everybody out. But yeah. But she probably doesn't realize how bad it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah, what radiation poisoning will do to her. Yeah. You know, it won't just be like a one day you just die. Yep, looks like she's got a little bit Yeah, I was going to say, they're trying to put the bag so you don't quite see it at first. You know, I don't know how much of her character was just like they made up lines and stuff for her, but it's just weird because in the beginning she was the smart one telling people like, don't go to the bridge. This might be dangerous. You know, maybe we should stay inside. Yeah. And then she turned right around and broke all the rules. Oh, yeah. And not even just a little bit. Like, major. Yeah. Why is the coal still exposed to the air? Why have we not already covered it up? We can't get close enough. The debris on the roof is graphite from the core itself. Until we can push it off the roof back into the reactor, it'll kill anyone who gets near it. You can see the roof is in three levels. We've named them. The small one here is Katya, 1,000 Rontgen per hour. Presume two hours of exposure is fatal. The one on the side, Nina, 2,000 Rontgen, one hour, fatal. Lunacard's STR1s, they're light, and if we line them with lead, they can withstand the radiation. Under no circumstances can men go up there. What about this large section here? Masha. 12,000 Rodkin. If you were to stand there in full protective gear, head to toe for two minutes, your life expectancy would be cut in half. By three minutes, you're dead within months. Damn. And our lunar rovers won't work on Marsha. 
That amount of gamma radiation penetrates everything. If it's more complicated than a light switch, Marsha will destroy it. It would be fair to say that that piece of roof is the most dangerous place on Earth. That's crazy. Yeah, it is. Or are these all the men that they recruited? Yeah, the 750,000 or whatever they were looking for. Yeah. Men might be a loose term. These are boys. boys. <laughs> I wonder what their age gap was. You know, like with the military, you have to be 18. Yeah. I wonder if there was like a certain age that they like stopped. I don't know. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Showers, food. Those guys, they dig up the ground. Those guys, they cut down trees. What about them? I don't know them. Fuck them. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want? Give me an egg basket. No, I've only got the one. Give me the fucking basket. He's with me. Nobody fucks with them. Put it on under your balls. Now? No, no, you can wait until the radiation gives you a cunt. Yes, <laughs> now. Over your clothes. Fucking shit. Well, you didn't <laughs> specify. Yeah. We do animal control. Animal control. Yeah, they're radioactive. Oh, no. But it's not hard. They're mostly pets. They're happy to see you. They run right up to you. Bang, you load the bodies on a truck, dump them in a pit, bury them in concrete, and then we drink as much vodka as you want. Plus a thousand rubles. Let's go get you a gun. It's sad, but that's probably merciful for those animals. I was about to say the same thing. It's like, I feel heartless saying that's probably what's best for them. Yeah. I need to see the following documents. They're listed as permission only. I'm working for the Central Committee. She can have that one. Damn. Signal. Acceptable. Running on board diagnostics. To think that's what we put on the moon. I'm not that one. <laughs> I think he I knows. Know, not that one. <laughs> this rover was in storage. They can build two more. That should cover Nina and Katya. Marsha. The Central Committee have informed me that they may have found something that could work up there from the outside. American? Of course not. <laughs> it's a German police robot. Well, he looks a lot better. Yeah. I see your condition has improved, Comrade Dyatlov. No, leave. I need your help. Can you confirm that the reactor exploded after they attempted to shut it down? How do I even know it exploded, huh? What the hell? He's gonna stick to that probably for the rest of his life. I found this in the state archive, written in 1976. It's about the operation of RBMK reactors under extreme conditions. So? The names of the authors have been redacted, and two pages have been removed. They made a mistake. They didn't redact the table of contents. Hmm. The missing pages apparently refer to a positive void coefficient and AZ-5. Does that mean anything to you? What are you after here? Why are you asking me this? You worked with this reactor. You know it better than I do. Oh, so everything's my fault, then? I'm not here to blame you. I'm here to find out what happened. And whether you realize it or not, I'm your best chance to avoid a bullet. I have no idea what would have gone here. Void coefficients have nothing to do with AZ-5. There, now you can go. <sighs> well, I imagine nothing that's about to happen is going to be easy to watch. Nope. I only have two rules. One, don't point this gun at me. That's easy, right? You can point it at this piece of shit. I don't give a <laughs> fuck. Never me. <laughs> two, if you hit an animal and it doesn't die, keep shooting until it does. Don't let them suffer or I'll kill you. Understand? I mean it. I've killed a lot of people. At least he's not heartless or anything. Yeah. I mean, in his own way. Yeah. <laughs> Your job door to door he's not gonna be able to do it mm. don't let them suffer sorry sorry you're dragging that to the truck kid was probably living a good life with his friends hanging out mm -hmm. and now he's going around killing animals booze and bullets nothing goes together all <laughs> right this happens to everyone the first time. My first time, Afghanistan. We were moving through a house and suddenly a man was there and I shot him in the stomach. Yeah, that's a real war story. But never any good stories like in the movies, they're shit. I was so scared I didn't pull the trigger again for the rest of the day. And I thought, well, that's it, Macho. You put a bullet in someone. You're not you anymore. You'll never be you again. But then you wake up the next morning and you're still you. And you realize, that was you all along. You just didn't know. The happiness of all mankind. What? Our goal is the happiness of all mankind. He speaks. Yeah. Oh, that's what that said. Back to work. Where'd all this stuff on the table go? 
just magically <laughs> disappeared. <Yeah. laughs> that looks way more like a modern day one. Yeah, it does. All right, let's take this easy. Forward one meter, reverse one meter. German. Reverse one. Ah, oh, damn. It's not a signal, it's the vehicle. It's dead. Fuck. That didn't take long. Not at all. Of course I know they're listening! I want them to hear! I want them to hear it all! I think he's a little mad. You think? <laughs> he's had it kept together this entire time. Yeah. Don't tell, tell fucking Gorbachev! Tell them! Jeez, man. Is it going to come out all composed now? <laughs> Carrying the phone. <laughs> <laughs> the official position of the state is that a global nuclear catastrophe is not possible in the Soviet Union. They told the Germans that the highest detected level of radiation was 2,000 Rontgen. Give them the propaganda number. That robot was never going to work. You need a new phone. <laughs> <laughs> 